another quick video on the uh, what price glory comforter now uh, when I posted that last video I did about the comforter you know the one where I was real excited probably more excited than I should have been but anyway I posted that to the what price glory page somebody asked me uh, where do I get instructions on how to sew this as a sleeping bag I posted the first video I did when I got the prototype. It's not really the best sewing video I can give you, even though this is a very easy, easy project. If you just bought a sewing machine, and you should, uh, if you just bought a sewing machine and you're looking for an easy first project, this is it. Okay? But this is made specifically for this comforter. Okay, a couple little tips in here, and I will say that if you want a more authentic bag, instead of sewing it at the bottom like I showed you, in, in the manner that I show you, measure up 12 inches, sew it there, and then cut off the last foot of the sleeping bag. Most of the pre-World War II sleeping bags I have encountered have been in the range from 60 to 72 inches. This comforter is 7 feet long. Now, I find an advantage in that in uh, modern uh, sleeping bags, a longer bag, because you can, you can hunker down in it, throw it up over the top of you, and as long as you leave a little bit of air space for your, for your breath to get out, so the moisture in your breath doesn't soak the inside of your bag, then, then you're toasty, warm, and cozy. Okay, so leave it up to you whether or not you want to keep the length or make it more, make it a more authentic length. I'm going to keep mine seven feet long. Okay, using this bag again, I've mentioned it before. I'm going to mention it again because this is the number one health and safety factor for sleeping in the woods in a sleeping bag. Your body exudes aspirates somewhere between a half a cup and a pint of water a night depending on all sorts of factors okay and that will soak into your sleeping bag overnight that's not quite so much of a problem if you sleep in it over a su succession of days your sleeping bag gets less and less and less effective okay uh, Number one, use a ground cover, a waterproof ground cover, and use some kind of insulation between the bottom of your sleeping bag and the top of that ground cover, okay? The planet will suck heat out of your body, and if you lay on your sleeping bag, you're crushing the insulation. doesn't matter what insulation you have, you're crushing that insulation, making it worthless. So put something else underneath there, okay? These bags work the same way the early 20th century sleeping bags did. There is no waterproof cover. You need an overhead cover and you need a bottom cover to keep moisture from soaking into that bag. Okay, And even if it doesn't rain, you're going to get dew and bird poop if you don't have some kind of overhead cover. Okay? All right. Let's listen to this old man show you how to sew this bag, and then we'll come up and say something else. See you in a minute. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay it out and we're going to fold it in half. And then we're going to identify this line of stitching right here. That is going to be our initial guide for sewing. When we take this into the sewing machine, we're just going to sew right down as close as we can to this line of sewing. That'll make your sewing a little bit easier. You won't be going through so much material. So just take your binder clips, 
cinch up the edges so that they're even and put your binder clip in there so that it is holding the two lines of stitching together. Okay, when you get down the sides, okay, what you want to do is you want to kind of reach in here and squeeze the two of them together and kind of push the insulation back, okay, so that you have none or almost no insulation, about a half inch from the edge and put your binder clips in there like that. Okay, this thing is exactly 84 inches long. I shouldn't expect too much variance in all of them. What you should do is come down here about 42 inches, it's just halfway, and do the same thing here, getting rid of the insulation, moving it back, and put a binder clip there. Okay, now what this will do for you is it will give you the place where you're going to open your bag. Okay. Giving myself three and a half feet of space to get into the bag is a good idea. If I feel like I need less, if, it, if this is too much, I can always sew a few more inches. Okay? But, if I sew something and it's not enough, well then i got to go through and use the, the seam ripper to fix it. Okay, so anyway, what we want to do is we want to put our binder clips about every six inches down here, moving the ins insulation out of the way every time we do it. And while we're sewing, as it's going through the machine, we want to make sure we push that insulation over so that our machine isn't working too hard. Okay, so here it is. It only took me about five minutes worth of sewing to get this done. I'll get you some close-ups of the stitching, but the one thing I want to show you here is this point right here is the end where the opening is. And what I did was, at this point here, once I finished my stitching, I came back about a quarter of an inch and I went with a stitch about a half inch long 90 degrees to that stitch. Okay, you can see the little the little cross shape I've made here. That gives a little bit of extra strength at this point. I'm hoping it's enough. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll show you the final step. Okay, the last step is to turn this thing right side out. Just reach in to the bottom, grab it, and pull. Get the corners squared up. Reach in there and give them a poke. Everybody likes a poke. Your sleeping bag really likes a poke. Give it a poke in the corner. And you want to kind of inspect all down the edges to make sure that you've got complete stitches, there's no holes to let the air in. But there we go. Put a layer out. There is your early 20th century sleeping bag. Suitable for use as a World War I officer or to go camping in the 1920s, early 1930s. Let's go talk about it. Well, there you go. 
Now, first off, let me just ask you that if, if, if you found this video uh, informative, if you liked it, uh, if you think you got something from it, please like the video, uh, please subscribe to the channel, and please share this uh, with, with folks, uh, individuals, or in your social media sites, uh, so that people who, who think the same way you and I do, who are interested in the same things, can find it on YouTube when they go searching for it, particularly reenacting and living history. Uh, now, you may notice in that video, uh, if you look, the World War I sleeping bag that we're using as a guide, and we're not making a reproduction of that, we're just using it as a guide, uh, you can see how much shorter it is than the comforter, about a foot. So if you want to make an authentic length bag, measure up a foot and cut the end of that off, use the excess as a pillow. In fact, if you want to use it as a pillow, run two lines of parallel stitching and cut between them and that way you won't lose any insulation. Okay? As far as use of the bag, uh, I, one thing I left out uh, of the beginning of the video is that due to your body moisture uh, being absorbed by the bag, what you should do when you wake up, first thing is get out of your sleeping bag and then turn it inside out and let it air out for a while. Let that moisture that is in the bag evaporate. Okay? Make your coffee, eat your breakfast, then stuff your bag in your pack inside out and, and go off and do what you're going to do for the day, whether or not it's hiking 10 miles or going to the battle. Uh, and then at night just before you go to bed while you're cooking your supper, pull it out, air it out again. The idea again is to get rid of the moisture in the bag. Okay? So, I hope you found this video uh, informative. I hope you make one of these bags. And I hope, and I see you down the trail.